Who do you know that just never meets a stranger? It's Robin Liz, his morning crew on his radio. I can tell you one right now, Liz. <laughs> Liz never meets a stranger. She talks to everybody. Like, for instance, my wife and I are getting ready to fly because mm -hmm. we're going on a little short vacation. We'll be back early next week, and we're leaving later on tonight. So, <laughs> and and I dread sometimes on a plane, and I don't know if you've ever flown, and if you have, if you're even like this, but you can sit next to somebody, and if they strike up a conversation, sometimes it's okay. Sure. But listen, not everybody's the same. And sometimes, and get me, I'm not judging, but get me here. You could you could have a conversation that's struck up by somebody that there's just not, you know, somebody you would get along with. And you're more annoyed than anything else. And you want to put your earbuds in or act like you're sleeping or do something, anything, just to avoid the conversation because you're just not into the conversation. It's not your topic. Right? Or. Listen. Or <laughs> last week, I went to a conference, and I was in the airport. I had a flight. There was a man that came up to me and was asking if he could sit next to me. I'm like, that's fine, yeah, because it was very crowded. The topic of conversation was not a problem, and I probably shouldn't say this, but his breath. <laughs> no. I was like, Liz oh. I can was... talk to anybody. But I said, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like audibly, oh. <laughs> You really? You reacted? I couldn't help it. It was like my body was trying to Aww. recoil. Did you have a mint? No, I wasn't going to do that. I just was like, sure, sit there. And then I just went into my book. Sure enough. I mean, they say that about 35% of people when it comes to airplane etiquette would rather avoid conversations. Period. Just leave me alone kind of a thing. I get that. And I'm not opposed to. I had one flight where the person who sat next to me was from the area. And we had a lovely conversation. He even goes to my church. I'm oh, like, really? wow, what a small world. What service you go to? I go to the 9. Well, I go to the 11. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, that's cool. You yeah. could have struck up a friendship right there yeah. on the... I actually sit a couple of rows behind you. And I went, oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> yeah. so cool. You recognize the back of my head. <laughs> Rob and Liz. His morning crew. So. What? Uh, there's someone special that's on the phone. <laughs> oh, this always worries this me. This is great. This oh, is great. No. So, um, this is Diane, and uh, Diane, I understand you're related to Liz. How so? I'm her cousin. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, family. I love oh, this. No. I love this. How long have you known your cousin Liz? <laughs> Probably 56 years. Oh, so you grew up together. You were little girls, and you grew up yes. to be oh, gosh, teenagers. Yes. We had so much fun. Wow. <laughs> Double dated and everything. Oh, not quite. No. So, <laughs> so Liz, Liz said what? Okay, first Liz. Okay, so I'm in the airport mm -hmm. last week, and a guy walks over and wants to sit next to me. And as soon as he opened his mouth to say something, the breath <laughs> took my breath away. Okay, and your thoughts, Diane, are what? I can see her doing that, and I can see her physically going, oh, because that's my puppy. Oh, when it's breath and death, I ain't about it. <laughs> Oh. Something tells me you two are just alike. In a lot of ways. Diane and I would have fallen out on the floor at the airport had we been together. <laughs> and it would have oh, been. Oh, I would have had to have a depend. No. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. There was a baby elephant. He was out with his mama. They were just having a stroll. And somehow the baby fell into this ravine. It was like a, a drainage area. And the baby just slipped down in there. Baby's a year old, but he's still tiny, you know, uh, next to his mama. Mom starts to freak out a little bit. She's making all these noises. Now, they're out in the wild, right? So she's making all these noises. Rescue team comes up trying to help get the baby out. But they had to tranquilize Mama, because she was trying to protect the baby from the humans, right? So they put, they tranquilize her. She falls asleep. Um, she fell down the hole along with the baby. The mom? Yes. So now they got to call in a crane operator. So they get a crane. They lift her up out of the hole. She wakes up in the middle of it. Baby's still stuck in the hole. She's, again, freaking out. She's making all these noises. Then she faints. An elephant fainting. Can you imagine that? She can't breathe very well. They had to give her CPR. 
They oh, really? They didn't give her mouth to trunk, thankfully. <laughs> but they did, like, start jumping on her to try to help, you know, revive her. and Get her lungs and, going? Exactly. It worked? It worked. That's interesting. And at the same, now, b- the baby is now freaking out. <laughs> so it was a whole thing. Because people are jumping on mom. Right. Yeah. And he is trying to protect her, and he's also worried. And so they finally ended up, everybody's safe. Mom is fine. Baby gets out of the hole. And Liz is talking about elephants, by yes. the way, just in case you're yes. joining us. And they cuddled. They cuddled. And she loved on him, and he loved on her. He had a little snack, and they took off. So everybody's good. Well, there you go. But I'm like, she fainted from the stress. And, I mean, that shows you how animals just care so deeply for their babies. Oh, she even had anxiety, right? She did. Yeah. She's like, somebody's got to get my baby. I can't do this. I can't get him out. And... She just fainted from the stress. Thankfully, they knew what to do, and they revived Mama Elephant, and now the baby elephant and mamas are fine. But who knows how to give CPR to an elephant? Rob and Liz. His morning crew. So in Texas, it has been so hot. You've you've seen the record break in heat, right? So in Texas, it's been so hot. It's been in the triple digits. They're having rolling blackouts now. Oh, yeah, rolling blackouts just to what conserve energy and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And I guess they're not putting the the info out there so well because not everybody knows they're going to be happening. Some people are being caught unaware. And there was a meteorologist that was actually on the air. Yeah, the so it day. happened to one of the big TV stations in Houston. And Travis Herzog is a meteorologist, and it happened in the middle of their forecast. Now, mind you. They do have generators at this TV station, and so the generators popped on, but what it didn't do was the lights kind of blink for a moment. Sure, the generator can only power so much at a time. Yeah, and then things start turning back on. And so this happens... In his forecast. West of Houston to get back above 100. (laughs) He did it again. (laughs) All right, so our lights just went out. But I learned last time I'm still on live TV. So uh, there's the forecast. Our lights always go first, and then we see uh, them cycle back on once we get our generator kicking back in here. But triple-digit heat out to the west. Thank you. Let there be light. And there was light. I like how he quotes the Bible there at the end. Thanks, Travis. That was awesome. (laughs) Let there be light, and there was light. (laughs) <laughs> wow. They have the rolling blackouts like that. We're fortunate that that doesn't happen with us. I know. You know, you know and they've been dealing with that um, just oppressive heat for a good long while. So they're probably getting used to the rolling blackouts, yeah, too. Yeah, right? Just don't let them happen around here. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. So I understand uh, Liz has a text to share. What's yeah. it about? So Christy said, because um, I'm trying to teach you a little tiny bit, not really teach you, but uh, French. She's talking about me. She's yeah. trying to teach me. Yes, because you, Rob, and your wife are going to Paris this evening, like getting on a plane mm-hmm. this afternoon. Um, and so say say bonjour. Uh, I, I try. Bonjour. Bonjour, so, bonjour. Bonjour, but Christy said she wants you to just say it just like that. <laughs> I said it right then, bonjour. No, you didn't say it right, but that's the way we well, want you, you to say, say it? it. Bonjour. 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 I can't do this. <laughs> okay, so let me okay. get laughed at. Um, je m'appelle, let's see, what would your name be? I guess you Robert. I, well, I don't know. That almost sounds that almost sounds Italian, but... Um, oh, I don't know. Say, Rob. I'll just say Rob. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle Rob. Look at that! You got yeah. it! Okay. Look at that! Okay. Nailed it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, comment allez-vous? Uh, El bou. <laughs> no, say what I said. What? Comment allez-vous? Come on, tell a vous. Comment allez-vous? Come on, tell a vous. What? It sounds like you're saying, come on, turn on the TV. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what okay. am I saying? Uh, I believe that is, and believe me, I haven't had French lessons since I'm in 10th grade, but I believe that is, how are you? Comment allez-vous? Oh, okay. okay. And I think I just responded, it's beautiful outside. I don't know what you responded, but I don't think that was it. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. So Baloo is a really creative and resourceful dog in this family. And Baloo knows how to stay cool. As a matter of fact, Baloo likes to run through the sprinkler. So much so that when Baloo's outside, he's like, man, I can stay cool in the sprinkler. He loves it. One day it was really hot. So Baloo decided to go out the little doggy door that they have for him to get into the backyard. Oh, he was looking for the sprinkler. Yeah, he brought it inside through the doggy door he while it help. was on. <laughs> 
crazy. So it took like a minute or two before Baloo's human realized what was going on as everything's getting drenched. Uh, Kara, mind you, made sure that she did take a picture of it so she could share with others and then took care of the sprinkler and dried everything off. So, I mean, the wall, the lamp, the couch, the end table, everything. I mean, Baloo literally brought the hose with the the sprinkler. It's one of those sprinklers that kind of go back and forth. It's not the... Oh, sure. That would have been worse. <laughs> it's one of the ones that have all the holes on the top, and it just goes back and forth. That's the sprinkler that he brought in. I, I'm a little worried about Kara and her family and, and their house because now he has understood the things that I want that are on the outside, I can bring to the inside. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Uh, a lot of my friends have played Wordle over the last year, but it to me it's a little boring just because, and I've never played it, so I don't know. <laughs> Here she is. It's boring. Well, if she's never even tried it. She'll get hooked as soon as she tried it. <laughs> but you play it by yourself because it's on your phone. It's on an app, I guess. But um, So they've decided they're going to make it a board game. So you can still play it by yourself, but you can also play it with other people. You can have teams and competitions. I overheard Jake and a ninja talking about it. What What's your thought about this whole new board game, Ninja? Uh, to me, it kind of looks like like Scrabble because yeah. it, it looks like it's hiding the words a bit. Yeah, so it's kind of been there, done that? Yeah. Okay, so I don't know like how it's even different really from playing Wordle on the app other than you can invite other people, but Ninja's played Wordle. Oh, yeah, Ninja has a thought about Wordle. What is oh, it? It's, it's like, eh. It's, it's, I feel like it's overhyped. Overhyped. Did over-hyped. you hear that? So if you want to spend $20 for something that's overhyped, <laughs> it's mm. coming to a board game. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. I don't think everybody does. I don't either. Oh, for real? I really don't. So do you? I do not. I wonder if Liz does. I think Liz does. Liz I, does. You no, do. I don't. I just yeah, said I don't. She does. Hey. She I does. I do not. I don't. It's never. Well, sometimes it is, but it's never. So, not, my, not my family. No. It, it is every now and then for us, but all four of us that live in the house, we have, you know, different preferences. And so. Yeah. So I feel <sighs> that for Liz, her family does. No, we don't. Yeah. Always no. have it. Yeah. No, we don't. It's in the freezer. It is not. Yeah, it is. Currently, right now. It right is. Now. Unless I'm going to say chocolate some- mint. <laughs> Ew. They say, oh, she doesn't like chocolate mint. <laughs> Not really. They say most people in America has ice cream in their freezer all the time. All the time. We have some frozen yogurt from time to time. It's never ice cream, though. We will have ice cream from time to time. I'm not saying we don't like it. We she just don't has. keep it. She has. But you know what we do have? She has growing boys. No. If they buy any, listen. If they buy any ice cream... Yes. They eat it. Like, they'll buy the little, you know, very expensive frou-frou pints, the haagen and whatnot. Really? Yeah, because... Your boys eat frou-frou ice cream? Here's why. Liz, boys eat frou-frou ice cream. Here, I didn't know that. Here's why. Because they want to make sure that nobody else gets into it so they can knock out the pint all at one time. Wow. <laughs> I think that's it. Huh. But, you know, we have popsicles, but we don't have... We don't have ice cream. You have something. Time. If there If there is a snack that's always in the house for Liz, yeah. what is it? Pretzels. You always have pretzels? For me. Huh. I, I would say nine times out of ten, I'm going to have some pretzels. I love me some pretzels. We have a protein bar. Is that your always... go-to snack? Yeah. Oh, my grief. Yeah, have some protein. <laughs>